Today on boat maintenance in 10 minutes or less, anodes or zincs as we used to call them, which one you need, where to put it, and why. And if you're moving between fresh and salt water, which one to choose. Practical sailor, writer, and videographer Mark from Aquaholic 3 did a great article you can read at practicalsailor.com where he explains choosing the right sacrificial anode is critical to protect your boat from galvanic corrosion. No matter what type of boat you have, if she's kept in the water all season, maintaining your sacrificial anodes must be part of your regular to-do list. This seemingly innocent looking part made of zinc, aluminum, or magnesium and available in various shapes and sizes and installation options is critical to your boat's well-being. Walk around your local marina or yacht club and look at all the boats on their cradles. You'll notice how many different anodes there are. Some are on rudders, some are on the outboard foot, some are on prop shafts. Some are in good shape while others are in need of replacement. At many clubs and marinas with no electricity delivered to the individual slips, anodes will last a very long time. That's because there's no galvanic reaction that goes on below the surface of the water to attack these important anodes. In harbors with shore power at individual slips, a galvanic reaction is mostly caused by neighboring boats that are plugged into shore power and left that way all the time. So if you do have shore power at your club, be sure to inspect your anodes and replace them regularly. What Mark's talking about here are stray currents being put out by your neighbor's boat, or maybe even your boat. When our boats are plugged in, they need to be grounded by ABYC code. And how the electrical systems are laid out, grounds are usually not done just to the electrical system, but to the boat, all the metal parts of the boat. The engine block will be grounded. The chain plates are often grounded for lightning strike and the keel. Also, we often see the rudder posts and prop shaft are grounded. What this means is that the electrical system in the boat passes right through the hull and into the water under the boat by way of the metal keel or the prop shaft or the rudder. So the electrical system of our boat is interacting with the water under us and so is the boat next door. If anything goes wrong, our boat and the boat next door will try to form a circuit between them. On one side, the water between them connects them electrically. And on the top side, they're both plugged into the same grid via the shore power cables. If something goes wrong and a stray current gets out into the water, the boats interact with each other and that conductivity starts to eat away at the conductors, like our prop shaft or our prop or our rudder. If you're in a marina and notice your anodes failing more quickly than expected, not only replace them, but also talk to the marina staff and let them know. There are ways to test for stray currents and if you can have this done, you can find out if it's your boat doing the stray current or one of your neighbors. Boats have sunk from this, so it's a good idea not only to replace your anode quickly, but also find the cause of the stray current and let the owner of that boat know what's going on before anyone loses a boat or gets hurt while swimming. This is why most places won't let you swim anywhere near the boats. Mark goes on in his article, but what exactly do these sacrificial anodes do? As their name implies, they sacrifice themselves by attracting corrosive galvanic reaction and by doing so, protect all the other metal components, such as your rudder posts and prop shaft, and any other medical components that are in the water. With the proper size, installation, and quantity, the anodes will corrode and deteriorate long before the other parts of your boat will. Hence why regular and careful inspection and replacement of those anodes is an important maintenance item on the checklist. Although these are easy to replace, for the most part, for some reason, I often see that they're not replaced. Don't wait for the anode to be completely gone before replacing it. As the surface volume reduces as the anode gets eaten away, the protection it's offering will diminish. Anodes come in different shapes and sizes to accommodate that insulation. Some are flat and aerodynamic to provide less drag. Others fit on the propeller shaft to protect the shaft, the prop, and the engine components. The biggest mistake I see are poorly installed and care for anodes. I see some directly on a fiberglass hull, which does nothing. It's got to be part of the electrical circuit to work. Unless the anode is somehow grounded to the hull, putting it on fiberglass won't work. I've seen people once in their slip hang an anode overboard, which doesn't work either unless it's somehow attached to the grounding system in the boat. Other mistakes are anodes installed on a painted metal surface, which provides zero metal to metal contact. 
and painting over an anode, which also renders it useless. Another common mistake is using undersized anodes. Telltale signs of an undersized anode are the surrounding metal area starting to show signs of corrosion and pitting. If that's the case, the best practice is to properly install a bigger anode or more than just the one anode. So zinc or aluminum, there are environmental concerns about zinc releasing toxins in the waterway, which is why aluminum was introduced. At the time, aluminum anodes were really expensive, but the cost has come way down. It's now competitive with zinc. So when changing anodes, consider switching to aluminum and make sure all your anodes are of the same material. Mixing the anodes isn't recommended. Also, aluminum anodes usually last longer and work better than zinc in brackish water and salt water. In freshwater applications, another option is magnesium, which offers better protection underwater, especially better than aluminum. However, magnesium is only good in fresh water. So if any of your time is spent in brackish water or salt water, stick with zinc or aluminum. Now, Mark's article is great. You can read the whole thing over at the Practical Sailor website. But as someone who moves his boat from fresh water to brackish water to salt water and back, I had to make a choice early on as to which anode to use. My boat's life was mostly spent in fresh water, so she had magnesium for the longest time. But when I planned to head to the ocean, I switched to aluminum. Aluminum works in both fresh and salt water and brackish water, so you can use it and go back and forth between the different water types. What I noticed as a difference was in fresh water, my aluminum anodes would last for a couple years, but in salt water, particularly in Florida, they would last about six months. But nonetheless, they work in both environments, so you're safe with aluminum. What's your experience with anodes? We'd love to hear from you in the comments, and don't forget to hit subscribe. See you guys next time.